Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, very special occasion where we come here today to honour uh, Helen Cohen. My name is Roland Lowther, and I've been invited by the family and am grateful to share in this uh, service of remembrance here today. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for coming and uh, participating and encouraging the family at this uh, time of great loss. Hans Christian Andersen was an author who wrote these words, a human life is a story told by God. All of us have had the privilege to read one or maybe more chapters of Helen's life. Today we come to the final chapter of her life story. Today we come to close the book for the last time. Knowing that even though this story has been told, the memories and the lessons and the love that we've drawn upon will live on in our lives and come to form part of our life story as well. Friends, we come here today to honour our beloved friend and to share uh, the grief with each other as we mourn her loss. Taking comfort from the fact that friendship not only doubles our joy in life, but it halves our grief in death. And so we come to, to honour Helen, to encourage the family and to grieve as appropriate. There's a poem that you may have heard of uh, called The Dash. You know on a, on a gravestone you'll read the, the date the person is born and the date that they die. But in between there's a dash and the dash symbolically represents the whole of their life they lived on earth. But life is more than simply a dash and I want to read to you this poem to give you um, an idea of uh, what I'm talking about. If I read of a man who stood to speak at his funeral of a friend, he referred to the dates on her tombstone from beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and following the date with tears, but said what mattered most was the dash between all those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. Now only those who loved her and knew her will know what that little line is worth. Well, we're going to take the opportunity now to reflect on what that little line is worth. And it's my privilege to invite Neil and uh, Diane's going to come up with Neil and they're going to share the memories of Helen and all that she meant to us uh, during her life here. So Neil, would you please come up? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, Helen Veronica Select was born into a German farming family near Gatton in the Lockyer Valley. Helen's grandfather was mayor of Laidley and her father served as a councillor and they were liberal thinkers. Her mum and dad were active in the local Labour Party and entertained, entertained the local candidate, Bill Hayden, when he stood for, against Gordon Chalk for state parliament. Helen continued the spirit of community service. She was a secretary of her bowls club in Perth, and as many of you know, she was active on the committees of the Hibiscus Retirement Village. Helen's childhood on the farm was happy and sad. She lost a brother, Charlie, in a drowning accident. She had um, also had brother, Frank, and sister, Joan. She told amusing stories of taking shortcuts through the bull's paddock on the way to school and maybe there developed her running abilities and athleticism that led her to excel at basketball. Helen was a smart dresser and a stylish beauty. She was also clever and accurate with figures. She worked as a secretary at Faulkner's Garage in Gatton. In 1947, Helen married Patrick John Fitzgerald. She and Pat ran bakeries, a cake shop, and hotel businesses over the next 20 years. They produced three children, Diane, Neil, and Suzanne. They separated in 1976. Helen worked at the Manly Hotel for many years until she met Avon Cohen while he was in Brisbane for a golf tournament. She moved to Perth to be with him and they married in 1987. Helen adapted to life in Perth quite well, made new friends and was embraced by Avon's family. Helen took up lawn bowls but was never successful in growing pawpaws in, in the Perth climate. 
Avon and Helen moved back to Queensland in 2000 and moved to the Hibiscus Retirement Village at Budrum Meadows. They made many village friends, as they're all up from there today at tests. When Helen returned to the recovery ward after a serious operation to remove bowel cancer in January last year, we were very relieved. Avon, Sue and I had waited for long hours, uncertain if we would see Mum alive again. Sue and I watched as Avon tenderly stroked her brow as she woke and saw how deep, deeply he loved her. Unfortunately, as it turned out, the cancer had spread, but Helen recovered well and was able to live fully for another year. Over the last few weeks, family and friends saw the love and pain in Avon's eyes as he held her hand and cared for her as her condition deteriorated. We are grateful that she had such a loving and constant companion for the last years of her life. Avon's sister Rose came over from Perth and helped care for, for Mum at home for a few weeks until she needed hospital care. We're deeply grateful to her for taking on such a difficult task. Last Friday, Mum asked to see Diane. Di flew down from Townsville on Saturday and Elisa drove her to the hospital. Mum was so happy to see her, greeting her with tears in her eyes. We are so glad that Di was able to see Mum the day before she died. After Di returned to Townsville on Sunday evening, we were called to the hospital. Avon, Sue and I maintained a vigil on Sunday night, taking turns to hold her hand as Helen took her last breaths. And she passed away peacefully on Monday morning. Well, how do we describe Helen? She was strong, capable, smart, tenacious and courageous. She was a, her own woman long before that was the fashion. She faced life's difficulties head on, endured pain and heartache with strength and grace. She worked hard all her life running businesses and running the household. She was vivacious and gregarious. She made friends easily and was a good friend to many. <coughs> Helen led a full and vital and active life. Avon and Helen travel overseas and around Australia. They have continued until very recently to have almost daily outings enjoyed and enjoyed all of the social benefits of living in the village. And they grew excellent pawpaws. Helen was self-effacing and did not impose, even in her final weeks. She could be critical and direct at times. Tact was not always her uh, strong point. But those words strang, sprang from concern and love. Helen encouraged all her children to live authentic lives and to be true to who we are. For that, we are forever grateful. Helen will be greatly missed by all her family and friends. Thank you, Neil and Diane. I just want to say also at this moment that um, during the cup of tea after the service, there's going to be a, a presentation on a computer where you'll see different photos scrolling through of Helen's life. And it will be your opportunity as you look at those photos to, to draw on the memories that you have of her and uh, share your own eulogy with each other and with the family. So please take that opportunity as it comes along. I want to complete the, the end of the poem that I began uh, before we had the eulogy.